On today's episode, we've got Louisa Ashforth. She's the LA skincare creator and skincare guru. On today's episode, she's going to show you how to banish dull skin, share her anti-aging secrets and bust myths over skincare. So next time you see me, hopefully my skin will be glowing. So without further ado, welcome onto the show, Louisa. And a big welcome on to the show. We have Louisa Ashforth, who's the LA skincare creator and skincare specialist. Um, so you've been in the industry for around 16, 17 years, is that yeah. right? Yeah. And what did you start out in? Because you've now created your own skincare range, which yeah. is amazing. Like it's been in L, it's been in Cosmo and won some awards. Um, but originally, did you start in the beauty sector or did you graduate into it? Um to be honest, I, I actually just went travelling and then I came, when I came back, I just went into the beauty industry. Uh, it wasn't really a planned career. I just did it because it was something I was interested in. And then, yeah, I just fell into it and then just loved it. And to be honest, from the start, I just loved skincare. I loved the products. I loved ingredients. So I was a bit of a skincare geek from the start, really. So, yeah. And so that led you. And so how did you get to the point? Because it's almost every little girl's dream to create their own like beauty range. Yeah. So the fact that you've gone out and created your own skincare range is pretty incredible. How did you get to that point? I just thought, you know, I've always thought, how could I do it? How could I do it? I'd love to do that. Like you say, it is a bit of a dream. Like, how could I do it? But then just eventually I just, I'd done that much training, that much knowledge of different ingredients and speaking to eventually the right people that I realised actually you can do it with the help from the right pharmacists and yeah, and then we just got some samples together and because I have got a beauty salon, I tried it on a lot of my clients and got feedback and they are really, really honest so they will tell me this, like the truth. And they were like, yeah, Louisa, this is brilliant. So I just decided to get them made in bulk and go for it and see what wow. happens. So and you were working in, you had your, is it your own salon back then yeah. when you could launch it? So it was your own salon, so you were already using sort of like facial treatments quite a lot. And then you, yeah. I guess you got to know the ingredients and then eventually create your own and test it out. That's really cool, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. My original plan was just to do it in my own salon. I just wanted my clients to have an amazing skincare range at an amazing price. So just cut out that middleman, really. But then it's just kind of expanded and it was my clients that sort of said Louisa you've got to take this further so I just tried and, and are you allowed to name drop any famous people that are using it because I have seen a little bit on social media of some yeah, celebrities um, we've got uh, our brand ambassador is Kerry Ellis who is a West End star and she's toured with like Brian May from Queen so I'm quite proud of that one because I just think she is amazing at what she does and the fact that she genuinely loves my products as well is really really good so I love that. Um, but it has also been featured in uh, Chris Maloney, took it into Celebrity Big Brother, which was quite organic. So I didn't know it was going to be shown in there. And there's so it's been on the TV with him and Stephanie Davis from Hollyoaks. So there's quite a few people that do use it. Uh, Jenny Powell has just recently tried it and she's just done uh, some Instagram posts on the it. The chocolate one, wasn't it? I yeah, the that. chocolate mask <laughs> one. Yeah, she was like, it's chocolate, <laughs> which I quite like that one. It's funny. So, yeah, there's quite a few people who do right. love it. So, for me and everyone that's listening or watching, um, some of the biggest sort of skin complaints we're going to sort of cover here. Yeah. So people can go away from this and go, right, okay, I'm going to inc- make my skin look beautiful and glowing like yours is. Um, so one of the biggest complaints that we all have um, at our particular age um, is dullness to skin. Yeah. Um, so what causes skin dullness and how can we get rid of it? How can we have that beautiful Lydia Millen glow? <laughs> Basically, what happens with your skin is your skin gets a build-up of dead skin so we obviously just put makeup on and yeah we might wash our face or take our makeup off but that dead skin is still building up so if we don't exfoliate it by that I mean you know you've got your scrubs that's taken off your dead skin cells and a lot of people miss that step out or are a little bit wary of that step so they just miss it out so exfoliation I think is the key to anti-aging spots dullness it's just all about getting the right routine for you. And is that when you say exfoliate, does it have to be one of the facial exfoliating scrubs or because you can get exfoliating pads, liquids, like what Yeah. What type? I'm a big fan of trying to have it within a product because there's a lot of ingredients that will naturally exfoliate your skin so it makes your skin work harder. So as we get older, our skin becomes sluggish. So when you're younger, your skin just naturally looks radiant. 
that as we get older, that natural process slows down. So if you can get an ingredient like salicylic acid, which is found in our cleanser, um, that will naturally stimulate your skin to exfoliate. Obviously, the scrubs are good, but it's just getting the right abrasion for you. Ours, you can actually, we've only got one scrub, but you can tailor it to suit you. So if you are quite sensitive, you can water it down because the, uh, the it's raw sugar crystals, so they will naturally like soften if you've, they've got a little bit of water. Um, so it's not, it's just making sure it's not too abrasive for you. But then you've got other things like an enzyme mask, which again, they've got ingredients in which stimulate your skin to exfoliate naturally, which I think are a better way of doing it so like in a liquid in a in something else yeah so how so how often should you be exfoliating because when you look into it there's so many different answers out there and it can feel really overwhelming because yeah. it's just everyone tells you conflicting information I just honestly believe it's about listening to your skin so some people once a week some people twice some people three times if you've got really congested skin it could even be four times but it's just about not overdoing it but making sure it's right for you. If it feels too harsh, then stop doing it. But at least one, a minimum of once a week, you've got to do something. At least once a week. Yeah, in, definitely. In a better format of like a, an acid in a sort of liquid, not so much yeah. a facial scrub. Not Can so you do... much. I would still recommend a scrub, but just making sure it's not too abrasive. Obviously, I'm going to recommend mine because you can tailor it to suit you. But... Um, yeah, just make sure it's not too harsh. And so how often would you use a facial scrub opposed to like a facial acid Again, <laughs> exfoliation? I would still tailor it to your skin. Right, so okay. it's about educating yourself on you. So our skin changes, especially women, all the time. We're like hormonal, uh, like monthly we can change, even daily for some people. So one week you might think, oh, I'll exfoliate once, oh, that's enough for me. And then another week you might be thinking, oh, gosh, I just can't seem to, like different seasons make your skin drier. Yes oilier so is there a way of like educate you know when you're saying about educating yourself is there a way like signs where you think oh, actually this is the right time to exfoliate if you even just touch your skin and it feels a little bit rough that right you need to fine. exfoliate if your makeup doesn't go on properly that's a massive key you know if it starts to become a bit patchy yeah yeah then it's like oh gosh you just need to exfoliate Ooh, your skin i like that. that's a really good tip was it they're really simple tips that you all yeah. know but we're like mm, i've never really made uh, that connection yeah. about that it being patchy exfoliate. and sometimes you see it but you just put more ma more makeup on and we're all culprits of doing it but yeah. actually it's like start from the canvas first like your skin's like a blank canvas and if your skin looks good you actually use less makeup yes so that's so true it's more cost effective so what about the exfoliating <laughs> brushes because all over instagram there's these different sort of like brushes some manual some electronic yeah. now it's not enough to just like cleanse and exfoliate your skin you now need a machine to do it yeah and I, personally i've not invested in one because i just don't know if it'd just be a bit harsh i think they could be a little bit harsh again i think they might be good for the once a week treat like to stimulate your skin a little bit more but to me you could maybe just get a scrub to do that i don't think it's essential I do know some people who absolutely love them, but my worry is that, like with makeup brushes, you're going to have to keep it clean because there's going to be so much bacteria that's going to form in that. And then if you're then trying to clean your face with something that's already got bacteria on it, you could be causing yourself a whole load of problems that you don't even you don't foresee yeah so yeah, i wonder how you can clean some of those as well because i mean i've, I've yeah. not got one but yeah that'd be an interesting one probably just with like the makeup brush cleaners yeah. you could probably like clean but it's all about keeping it sterilized i think because you are washing your face with that and obviously um you can have all your dirt and grime that you've just taken off your face so you're gonna have to really keep it clean so i'm not 100 percent sure on them myself i haven't got one and i'm more of a fan of using like i said the ingredients like salicylic acid mm. that will naturally stimulate your skin and is there a percentage that you should be looking for that's optimum i that? think if you're going to use it in a cleanser i would keep it quite low so um i would say like a maximum of a two percent really um there's so many like chemical peels with salicylic acid in but they're way more in salon treatment Yes. So I would go to a specialist For to that. have something like Got that you. done. So I'd just keep what you can do at home at a minimum um, and then go to a salon for some more intensive treatments. Treatment. And that's where I'd probably incorporate machines as well. Got you. And so then, so I've got, now got glowing skin, yes. hopefully, <laughs> after that. How can I stop it ageing? Because we're at that age where you can start seeing some lines forming. Yeah. How can I stop it? Well... Aging, uh, again, it's all about exfoliation to me um, because when you've got a build-up of dead skin, your moisturiser's not going in properly. Uh, I'm going to use a really... Um cheesy kind of like lime but I always say it's like butter on cold toast it's just not going to soak in and that's like your dead skin so if you um, 
take off that dead skin and then think of butter on warm toast, it's just going to soak in really nicely. So if you've got rid of that dead skin, that's when your moisturiser will work at its most effective. And it's all about getting your moisturiser with... Obviously, ingredients now like hyaluronic acid, they're all brilliant for plumping out fine lines and really helping with like anti-aging. So you need to exfoliate to make your moisturiser work better. If you just keep slapping it on, you're just putting it on top of dead skin, really, so it's not been the most effective. And is there a percentage of, I can never pronounce that, hyaluronic, hyaluronic <laughs> acid? <laughs> they vary. Obviously, it is price dependent. You'll see something that'll say it's got hyaluronic acid in, and it will legally have to have it in. If it's five ninety nine, it's probably not got a lot in. I'm not right. saying it's not going to do anything. It will still be good for your skin. But obviously, the more expensive it is, probably the higher the concentration is as well. And is there like a rough guideline you'd recommend concentration wise? If someone's looking at a packet, um, like is it six percent, ten percent? You know what's? I would what's again. It? I would just try and get a minimum of two percent. Minimum two yeah. percent. It's good to know these things. Yeah. You don't know otherwise unless you ask someone. Yeah, it doesn't have to be that high, but you want to get something that's really, really going to work. And a really good question here, because this really bugs me. I do end up buying a lot of beauty products. Yeah, I do everybody has a drawful, don't they? Yeah, you do. And I think because, like you say, your skin change and stuff, you're like, I don't like yeah. that anymore, it's change. Do you need a different daytime and nighttime moisturiser? Again, just dependent for you. For me, what... I've done with LA Skincare is I've created six products. So the first three are all about exfoliation, which we've kind of just covered. And then the other three are all about nourishment. So it's about your moisture. There's an oil, which is an essential oil, uh, sorry, full of essential oils. It's like a serum that can go underneath your moisturiser. It can be used as a standalone product as well. Now, sometimes I recommend that to add in at night. So for those people who don't really need a high concentration in the day, you know, they want a lighter formula of a moisturiser to sit underneath the makeup, or like if you've got oilier skin, you probably wouldn't use a serum in the day. But at night, you might just in, like just like healing your skin. So have a little bit more at night because you've got longer to soak in. You're not yeah. tend to put makeup on top. And it's at night but when you don't skin... necessarily need two different products. Not really. It's good to have extra ones to yeah. add in, but I don't think you need to go, that's my night time, that's my day time. It's just if your skin needs it, then add it in. And I like um, that because I think there's so much marketing of like you have to have the nighttime version of the eye cream in yeah. the morning and you end up just... And <gasps> it just ends up being... 20 products when you, you yeah. know just a few would do your skin rejuvenates overnight so it's good to have those uh, like I said the serum with essential oils in it's good because they'll do all their work at night so the moisturiser will be more effective at night so like you say it's got time to soak in and to heal your skin which I like the sound of that and what about SPF should we definitely be wearing it and 100%. is it effective is it effective in like a day cream or a makeup because I've heard mixed reviews on whether you should you ne literally need a separate product of SPF then your moisturiser, then your makeup, rather than a makeup with SPF in. Yeah, I, I do use makeup with SPF in it, to be honest, but I also do have a, a, a cream with an SPF in it. But you definitely, definitely do need it. Because even in England, when we've got barely any sun, I know, um, but it's it's not just about the sun, it's protecting you from pollution, from different things in the environment, um, not to go into it all, but we've got all, like, toxins, so our bodies need to fight those toxins away. So if you can protect it with the SPF, that will it does protect your skin from pollutants as well, which are ageing, so... It's trying to, it, the SPF again will help with anti aging. So the more you can do, but like you said, I do think it is good to have it in a makeup for when you're not using it in your moisturiser. Um, but one of our creams does have it in, but you need a minimum of at least 15. I know people will scream at me going 50, 50, but yeah, the higher the better. But I would say a minimum of 15, 15. for those people who are, I don't want to wear it, I don't want to wear it. But I am, yeah, I do agree. It just does need to be quite high. So I need to exfoliate, I need to moisturise loads, I need SPF. Is there anything else for my anti-aging regime? No, I think that's pretty much it. Obviously, if you can go to a salon and have a more intensive treatment, then I would say do that. There's uh, microdermabrasion I'm a big fan of. I, I've looked um, into it, but I was a bit worried. Yeah. And again, like how I always feel with the beauty industry is that there's so much marketing Absolutely. and so many places just want to sell their products rather than really look after you. Yeah. I'm like, is it just another thing that I should do? But 
microdermabrasion. I think it's really, it's just a really deep exfoliation. And again, your skin, um, uh, sorry, your pro products will soak in really, really well. And I always say to all my clients, as much as I, I know I have got an amazing range, I'm not slagging any products off or anything like that, but um, you, nothing makes your skin feel quite as good as, as the microdermabrasion. It really exfoliates all your dead skin, but in a kind way. And it's it's quite comfortable. And then you're getting all your, you know, your nourishing treatments as well while you're in salon. So and I do how recommend often that. Is that something and I know it's very different depending yeah. on the person is there like a ballpark figure of like you I would say once a month really once a month. yeah even if you were like I can't go once a month just once every six months just something for a treat for your skin especially when the winter months are here because nine times out of ten most people's skin does dry out when you've got central heating and the weather changes. Mm. So, like, something like that is a really good pick-me-up. So, say, like, around now, with perfect timing, when we're going into a new season, it's quite good to get rid of all that dry skin and then, like, start afresh. So, you know, even if you made it your March time treat kind of thing, yeah, you know. Yeah, that's a good way to put it in, isn't it? It's a microderma break. That's a really good one. Yeah, I'm a big fan. Like, I love it. It's really, really good treatment. And is there... Because, obviously, there's so, so many salons that offer it now. Yeah. Um... Is there, like, something that you should look for in a salon that does it? Because, obviously, a lot of people that live in Sheffield will be able to visit you that listen to this, but yeah. there'll be a lot of people all across the country that can't <laughs> yeah, come definitely. to Sheffield for it. So what's the sign of a clinic? Is there a benchmark or an award or something you should look for um, if you're going for a microdermabrasion somewhere? I would really recommend going for a consultation first. I think it's all about getting a feel for the salon and the clinic, getting a feel for the therapist who's going to do it for you. I would make sure that they've got... Um, if you can, certain credentials, um, or mainly on experience. Um, I'm a big fan of the diamond version of the microdermabrasion because the crystal one, for me, it's a bit more blasting into your face and I find it a little bit harsh, whereas the diamonds, it's using the natural abrasion of the diamonds, so you're not adding anything onto your skin. It is just using... Does it hurt? No, no, it's actually quite comfortable. A lot of my clients call it a mini Dyson because it, like, kind of hoovers your face off and then you see on the filter paper all your dead skin that's Oh, come my off. God, yeah, that's... <laughs> I love that bit, it's my favourite bit. <laughs> oh, God, when you see it, you're like, oh, And my, my clients God. know it is my favourite bit yeah, as well. Oh, I bet. There must be something really satisfying about yeah. that. Yeah, especially when they're saying, oh, Louise, my skin feels so good. That's what, that's it for me. I, that's, that's why what you do I, it, yeah, making people it's, feel good. It's just because they feel so good and they're like, oh, my skin's never felt so good. And that's what you so. want, isn't it? It's lovely when your skin feels like you yeah. just feel a lot more confident, Definitely. Don't you? And even the next day when you wake up, it's still so soft and you think, oh. It's and how long okay. before you should put makeup on? Ideally, like obviously, don't put it on that day. If it's mineral based makeup, you can, but I would still say if you can avoid it, try and avoid it until at least the next 24 hours if possible, but at least the next day. So your skin is going to be a break. Heal. Definitely. Yeah. So, anything else in terms of anti aging? Uh, I don't think, there's, obviously there's plenty of things that oh, gosh, um, yeah. we I could mean, go on and on and on. But I think it's just about listening to your ones. skin and doing as much as you can and getting someone who you can trust. Like if you've got a salon um, or a therapist that you can trust, go and talk to them and ask them their advice mm. and try and learn a bit more about your own skin. Um, a lot of my clients come to me and they know I'll just be really honest with them because... I want them to go away and have nice skin, mm. so I want them to do it at home so they can learn about it. And what about um, sort of like masks and stuff at home? I know you've got um, a chocolate mask yeah. that's really popular. How often generally, and again, I know it's all ballpark yeah. averages because everyone's different. Is that, so should we be aiming for like a mask about once a week? Definitely a at month, least once a week. Or? It's the step that a lot of people miss out because I haven't got time for that. And uh, there'll be people who are screaming at me now if I say this, but... With my mask in particular, I just said, you know what? We're, none of us have got time. Just slap it on on a Saturday morning when you're doing the hoovering. And by the time you've finished, you, you know, it's time to come off. Or even at night, most masks will stop working after, you know, like some of the active ingredients will stop working after so long anyway. So if you put that mask on, I don't know, say you went to the toilet and then you went downstairs and watched Coronation mm. Street. I, I've done that before and then not washed it off before I go to bed. Mm. So, you know, there's no excuse for not having time. You know, we've never got time. So it's just about just, even if you put it on on top of makeup, you know, it's not ideal. I know that. But it's better than having better than nothing not, at yeah. all. And the enzyme peel that I've got, the ingredients will work through your makeup unless you've got it caked on. But generally speaking, like if you've just got a bit on, then. So, what's like a good routine to get into? Because I feel like I'm in a routine, whether it's the best routine, the jury's out. So, what roughly should we be doing, sort of like morning and evening? Definitely, obviously, in a morning cleanse. Well, uh, obviously, your, your routine should be like cleanse and moisturise, obviously. Um, I know there's toner in there as well, but for me, I decided to make a range that didn't need a toner because it's a foaming wash cleanser, so then you rinse it off. 
However, some people were obsessed with washing our face, which can dry out your face sometimes. So I advise people to sometimes just wash the face at night, because obviously you're taking off that daily dirt and grime and makeup. But maybe in the morning, sometimes just rinse your face with water, uh, warm water, or get a face cloth if you feel like you need to kind of wipe over and then rinse it off. It's not always essential to wash in the morning, so just listen to your skin. I know that sounds really gross, but your skin's already been washed at night and it's yeah, already clean it's when you wake up. It? Yeah. It's just rinsing off any, like, you know, rejuvenated cells, etc. in the morning before you put your um, So generally cleanse on. and moisturise in the morning, but depending on yeah. your skin. In the evening, a bit different? Or? In the evening, obviously still cleanse and moisturise. If your skin needs it, then do put that serum or a serum And you underneath. said earlier, which was interesting, the serum, then the moisturiser, where I think I yeah. read on my products to do it the other way round. Yeah, I, you're meant to put whatever's the lightest underneath first. Okay. So if um, I would put the serum underneath, because it's like I said, it's full of essential oils, it's healing your skin, and then our... I'll plump me up moisturise, which has got the hyaluronic acid in. Um, I quite like that over the top of the serum because it feels quite tightening. So I feel like it's working and like locking it all in. I, that's just me. I'm not saying it actually does that, but that's what I feel that's like. I feel, feel like I'm like, oh, it feels so tight. I'm like, oh, yeah, I love it. Um, and then the whipped cream one that we've got, that's got the hyaluronic acid in as well, but it's also got the SPF in. But again, if somebody felt they needed to use that at night, just because it's got the SPF in doesn't mean they can't use it at night because it is a thicker, creamier moisturizer and some people at night just like that so there's no right or wrong with it it's just there so yeah uh, it's not that's the way I would recommend doing it so but it's morning what, what like cleanse moisturize evening m cleanse moisturize yeah oh, hang on cleanse serum moisturize yeah and that should be enough yeah what about I am um, sort of spot treatment I, my chocolate mask is the go-to product, I always say. If you've got anything wrong, just even if you've got a spot and you haven't got time to do the mask, just put the mask on the spot because ah. it'll just heal it while it's there, uh, while the mask's on it, sorry. Um, so that's what I would say to use. Um, a friend of mine swears that my softer silk serum is a, is a zit zapper. I would not say that, but she oh, says I it feel is. like you're going to like look down on what I've found best. I've tried loads uh, over the years. Is it toothpaste? <laughs> no, I've tried that. It doesn't those. work. It doesn't no, do anything. You know no. what does work? Pseudo cream. Okay, cool. Have I've learned something it? today. <laughs> Have you never heard of that one? No. <laughs> I only learned about that in the last year or so. Oh, it works a treat. Do you know what? If it works, I think go for it. I'm going to be telling so I'm going to try it because I do get a lot of yeah, spots. Yeah, it's really it good. Not, yeah, so. I tend to put it on right at the end, just like sort of leave it on for a little bit and then rub it in. Yeah. Well, it's Definitely full of dries them stuff, out so. and shrinks them. Whether that's the right thing or not to do for my skin, I feel like I'm confessing. Do you know what? Pseudocrem, it's not a bad thing. I, I wouldn't slap it all over my face, no, no. but to help with spots, it's way better than squeezing them. So, <gasps> Well, that was one of my <laughs> myths, actually. So we're going to talk, bust a few myths in the time we've got left. Um, so spots. If it's got a head, do you squeeze it or not? Because like you, you go out and you're like, oh my god, I've got a spot. Yeah. It's got a head on it. If Should it's got a head on it and it is literally ready to pop, then I wouldn't say don't. But I would just say be really, really careful because obviously you need to. You don't want to spread it. So yeah. sometimes if you've got a spot and then you've squeezed it and it's you know all over, then you don't want to spread it. So just be really, really careful if you do. But if it's got a head on it, it's just going to pop anyway, so that's fine. But if it hasn't. I see a lot of people trying to pop a spot when I'm like, there's nothing there yet. You're popping a red mark and you're just going to make it oh, but it's sore. satisfying, isn't it? It is if there's actually something And you feel there. like there's, there's, it feels like there's a lot of pressure behind it, though, yeah. and it feels sore, doesn't it? Yeah, so I think if it's not got a head on it, don't pop it because you're just going to cause yourself a little bit of scarring, which is worse than the spots. It lasts mm. a lot longer. And my advice is just leave it. If you can, just leave it. Obviously, if you're going out the next day and you've got this humongous spot, then I get it. I'm the same. I get a lot of spots. So just get the chocolate mask or pseudocreme now. <laughs> That's That's way it. It, honestly, it works a treat. You're going to me out of business. I've tried a lot, but pseudocreme <laughs> is the best one I've found so far in terms of spots. So, yeah, you shouldn't squeeze it. Um, what about washing your face in soap and water? Because sometimes you read, like, I can't remember what celebrity, it's like Jennifer Anderson or someone, who says, like, she just keeps it simple. She yeah. washes her face in soap and water. One of my friends does it, and she's got really good skin. Mm. Should I be doing that or mm, pH levels? Yeah. I would say no. Obviously, if it works for someone who's got like severe spots, then maybe, but no. Get a foaming wash face cleanser because at least then that's kind of like your soap. Some people call mine a soap and I go, it's not a soap. But, you know, if that works for them, that's fine. But I would never criticise what somebody does, but I do cringe. And one of my clients did say to me, Louisa, why is my skin always dull? 
she used my products and I thought, I don't know. So she talked me through what she did and I said, well, you've got my cleanser, haven't you? Yeah. And do you use it? Like, when do you use it? Morning and night. She went, oh, no, I just use it the best. And I went, what? So she used soap and water and then she bought all these expensive products. Not that mine are that expensive, but I just mean it's still more expensive than a, a, soap, a bar of soap. And then I went, well, there's your answer. I said, just try it for me. Two weeks later, I saw her, she, her face was beaming. She was smiling, going, Louisa, look at my skin. And I went, have you stopped using soap? And she went, yeah. She went, I can't believe it. So, God, it's crazy, isn't it? Yeah, and then when I told that story to someone, she went, I use soap and water. And I thought, oh, I give up. So, yeah, we're all, you know, people do. But I, I would say... Don't. It's That's gonna dry your skin out. I bet a few of us do that where we have our beauty best, but actually it makes sense to look after your skin all yeah, the time. Yeah. And talking about looking after skin facials. So yeah. me and my friends were talking and um why is it after a facial? like a lot of us in my friendship circle and other people have spoken to yeah. on socials. The breakout, we break out in yeah. spots, like to the point where it's put me off actually having a facial because it yeah. was that bad last time. Oh, it was yeah. like all over. Like I, it was horrible. Why is that? Is that normal? Should I be expecting that? Is it I help? I <laughs> think that I would often say that sometimes those spots are already underlying, so they're already ready to come out. If you've had such a breakout like what you've said, then I'm not sure that's really correct. Like, or not the right thing to happen, mm. should I say. Um, a lot of facials, you, you end up having... You've had your exfoliation done and then you get a mask on and then you've got this product slapped on and this product on and it just seems to be layering after layering mm. and I don't feel like sometimes it's got time to soak in. So sometimes maybe that could be clogging your pores or if it's not the right moisturisers for you or it's too heavy, that could then generate more sebum production that you didn't really want, which can cause spots or just congestion really because it's not had time to soak in, which then can cause congestion. So I think it's just making sure you get the right facial for you because sometimes it does feel like they're putting so many I mean I've yeah. been on some and they've just had a couple and there's others where I'm thinking what on earth can you be putting on now Like I've had it before where I've, I've actually wanted to get up and wipe my yeah. face this, the products are lovely you know I don't obviously when I go somewhere it's not always my products that's used so I enjoy your treatment just like everybody else but sometimes I do want to give my face a good wipe because it's just it's just excessive there's just no need and it's as if I don't know maybe maybe people feel think it feels more luxurious to yeah. have more put on but actually I'm more of a fan of I don't want you to leave feeling clogged up mm, and most people after my facials don't say that they've come out in spots so I'm not saying that I'm the only one I'm just saying that yeah it is a, I know it is a really common thing and I would still say avoid it if it's the day before your wedding just in case I wouldn't mm. want to be that person who says you'll be fine <laughs> <laughs> and then you have a massive like spot Frank on your time, wedding yeah, yeah. but yeah it, it does happen but I would say that they are underlying and I would um it's just about using yeah just make sure they're not too rich for you some of the products yeah well thank you for busting some myths there so if people do want to come and visit the salon yeah. where are you based how can people find you on socials yeah um well we're based at Aston which is just uh, just off junction 31 of the M1 so um it's kind of like is it like the south side of Sheffield <laughs> I think it is so um, which is just the other side of Sheffield um but yeah so and what's the name of the salon there. LA Beauty and LA Hair. Beauty. Yeah, so we've got LA Skincare for the skincare range, LA Beauty and Hair for the salon. Um, we've got all experienced therapists there. And people that aren't at Sheffield, where can they buy the products? Uh, we've got um, a website online, so um, laskincare.co.uk. Uh, they can buy. And we've also got um, a diagnostic form on there. So you can just answer a few simple questions, um, sort of about, just about your lifestyle and the way that my products work. You do tailor them to you so if you're feeling dry one day you've got um, a little like prescription for you and then if like a few weeks later you're like oh, I'm really oily now you just go back on and just kind of change the answers to the questions that are more relevant then and then it'll generate a new prescription for you so you can it just shows you how you can swap and change between the products that so you don't have to just use the same things all the time so rather than having a drawer full of dry products and oily products for when your skin changes you can just have like a little tool you kit how you and just it, um, which yeah. makes sense and what yeah. about things like amazon is it available on amazon or anything yet or? um it, it is available on amazon or oh, i know uh, one of my uh, stockists she's put it on amazon so mm. i know that it is on there but yeah but it's mainly available on the website or we've got salons that do stock it around the country as well so it's a really it's good opportunity site. yeah yeah just wonder, yeah where people can get it from it's just having it avenues isn't it yeah and then people can go and try the products as well so it's good to go and talk to a therapist you know 
Yeah, like it's sending down south somewhere. We've got a few salons in Essex and Manchester and all over. It's all so, over. And what yeah. about your socials? What are you on Instagram, Facebook? Yeah, they're all on uh, LA Skincare um, on Instagram, uh, LA Skincare uh, UK Limited on Facebook and on Twitter, LA Skincare. Brilliant. Well, thank you for coming on the show now. No, I no just problem. feel like thank I need you. to go home and have a really good <laughs> scrub and hopefully come back on my next episode. I'll look glowing, guys. Yeah. I'll have to give like a little review. But any words of wisdom on parting that you want to leave advice-wise for skincare? Um, I'd just say just please, please listen to your skin. Just because your friend's doing it doesn't mean it works for you. doesn't mean it's the right thing. Just... Yeah, just don't be afraid of exfoliating, but don't do it too much. So just get the right one for you. Or please just send me an email, info at laskincare.co.uk. And uh, I'm happy to have a chat to anyone. I love skin. So um, I love to try and... I do, I love skin. I feel like you need that on a t-shirt. I love skin. I love skin. <laughs> I might get so much light. Yeah, um, in your right colour though. Otherwise, Harry will... Absolutely. Um, on oh, previous yeah. episode, we talked about the right colour. Um, so Harry, if you're watching and listening to this, we're, we've listened to you and yeah. we're in the right colours. I've got my green. I've got my lilac, my leopard print. So if you've... Le- Learned from the earlier one. I wasn't allowed to page the print. So we are listening, Harry. But it's worth it if checking out that episode. <laughs> I'll link it up below that episode. But thank you very much. No and I'm thank off to you. go and scrub.